Thank you once again for joining us at Historic Investments. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Rather than look at one specific gun, we're going to actually look at a genre, and in this case, cutaways. I don't know about you, but for me, there's always a concern when buying a factory cutaway, and particularly when paying a premium price. You really want to make sure it's a factory cutaway, but you're not quite sure. So what are the clues? Certainly, it's a minefield of concern. Is this cutaway a result of a master machinist? Is it a skilled hobbyist trying to resuscitate an otherwise tired firearm? There are no absolutes, but there are some general guidelines. Let's take a look at a number of these cutaways and, and hopefully you'll feel better after the video about making your own decision. Cutaways are generally made for informational or for um, educational purposes. Um, back in the day, cutaways were often submitted to the patent office for uh, licensing. Uh, later on, cutaways were uh, not infrequently made and shown to a variety of police departments and even militaries to underscore why a particular gun was an improvement compared to the previous model or a superior to um, that of their competitor. The cutaways can be uh, taken from any phase of production, either from unfinished parts, for uh, completed but uh, unproved pistols, and even rarely from final finished guns. But there are certain things which are much more common than others, and certain things which are more common amongst certain manufacturers than other manufacturers. So today we're going to look at a, um, a variety of cutaways. We've got a, a, a Roth 1907 Roth Steyr. We've got a, a, a Sig P225. We've got a couple of Walthers that are actually nicely finished and blued. We've got an Astra 600 that's in the white. We've got a blued Model 3000, and we've got a, a chrome star pistol. So let's look at a variety of these guns and highlight the differences between them. Let's start out with the earliest uh, of the guns in this group, which is the um, factory cutaway of the first variation Roth 1907. The earliest guns have thin triggers in contrast to the uh, later and much more common guns. But that's really a, a minor point uh, for purposes of this discussion. Why is this a factory cutaway? Well, for one thing, it has none of the usual factory markings. Even the earliest first variation guns had a Steyr address on the top of their slide. The guns were serial numbered. This cutaway has no serial number. The guns were proofed just below the cocking knob. This gun has no proof. I should mention that it is a first variation gun because there is no disconnector in this location. Very typical for many of the factory cutaways. The gun is otherwise totally in the white. And what makes this cutaway particularly interesting is that it has also been fitted with the uh, checkered grip panels. As you probably know, the 1907 Roth pistols, at least those that were put into production, have serrated panels. Checkered panels were basically limited to the um, uh, pre-production and prototype guns. So this is a very interesting gun in that it's unfinished, no serial numbers, no proof, and has the checkered panels of the pre-production pistols. No question that this is a factory cutaway. This Astra 3000 is a much later cutaway. In contrast to many of the Astras, which I mentioned were chrome guns, this one was blued and then cut away. As you may immediately discern, in contrast to the Astra 600, the cutaway surfaces are left in the white. They were not jeweled. But this gun also has got a number of differences compared to production pistols. You know, for example, no serial number, no serial number, and no proofing. Again, not surprising. This gun is marked with the usual Astra legend on the side, and as true for really all factory cutaways, it's fully functional as far as, its, as far as its manual mechanics are concerned. I did mention that it's not serial numbered. That means to say it's not serial numbered in the normal production range. When uh, the gun is disassembled, the small parts in this example are marked with a small nine. 
Again, there are enough differences compared to standard production guns that you can feel very secure that this is indeed a factory cutaway. Star cutaways pose a particular problem as quite a few were cut away in Spain for purposes of deactivation. So the question is, is this a factory cutaway or was it a deactivated and re-chromed cutaway and that was later uh, commercialized? In this case, it's clearly a factory cutaway. Why? Well, the key again is you look for the serial number. This gun was never serial numbered. You can say, oh, well, look at the uh, jeweling marks. Well, a master machinist can jewel a gun and a lot can be hidden by uh, chrome later on. But again, no proofing, no markings, no markings at all, and um, there are no hallmarks whatsoever that the gun has been repolished, touched up, or re-chromed. So again, no serial number, no proofing, sharp edges, and the finish is very consistent with a factory chrome. You can feel comfortable that this is a factory cutaway. What about SIG pistols? SIG pistols are usually pretty easy to spot. Well, for one thing, even though the box is labeled Schnitt Model, anybody can write Schnitt Model. So don't use the writing on the box to be your determining factor. Look at the gun. Again, it's, it's true for all gun collecting. Buy the gun, don't buy the story. The nice thing about the majority of SIG cutaways is that they were numbered in a special serial range. So if you look at the serial number of the gun, it's 375. How were most of the um, 225s serialed? usually with an M prefix and a six-digit serial number. The other thing that uh, has been popularized in more recent times is instead of leaving the cut areas in the white, they've been highlighted in red. So if you look at the uh, cut areas, they have been nicely relieved. If you look at the edges, the edges have been relieved just a little bit, a little bit recessed, and then they were blued before the red highlighting. And if you look at the finish, it's a typical factory finish. No one has taken a worn gun, cut it away, and re it, and tried to pass it off as a factory cutaway. Can some factory cutaways be worn? Absolutely. But not when you have a really fresh, crisp gun like this in its own special serial range. Clearly a factory cutaway, and then one you can study and be comfortable with when evaluating other samples. Following the Sega P225, let's look at a couple of Walthers because even though these are finished in the same way as the Sig, there are a few differences worth pointing out. Let's start with the P5. Well, as emphasized earlier in this video, if it's a factory cutaway, it'll either usually not have a serial number or be serialed in a special range. Look at the finish. This is clearly a factory finish. Where's the serial number? Hmm, this gun does not have a serial number. So, factory finish, no serial number, cut away with red highlighting, which is kind of a modern technique. You can feel pretty comfortable that once again, this is a factory cutaway. Things get a little trickier once the guns have been um, serial numbered and marked in the usual manner. So let's take a look at this PP Super. Okay, you need to look at this gun very carefully. You look and make sure that the planes are flat, the writing is crisp, you look at the cutaway, look at the quality of the cutaway, look at all facets of the gun, you say, oh, full serial number. Well, that's a little bit unusual. Oh, I really don't like the fact that it's proofed. Well, I have to admit, those are red flags. Now, every company did, maybe at the last minute, decide, gee, we need to take a couple of cutaways for this uh, sales meeting or for this gun show or you know, for whatever customer request was extant and they just didn't have any in inventory. So it wasn't, it was unusual, but certainly not unheard of to take guns from inventory and cut them away. For the most part, as you probably should have gleaned, cutaways were not taken from completed guns that were made for sale. They were made up from rejected parts. 
They were taken from guns that had not gone through the final finishing or, or proofing process, but certainly anything goes. And if you have any number of reference books, I know particularly in the, uh, in the Astra uh, Firearms and Selected Competitors book, there are a number of Astra serial number blocks that the factory did set aside and specifically mention as um, seccionado or cutaway. Well, this is exactly what's happened to the Walther because if you look at all of the machining marks on it, you look at the blue, and but also you look at the manner in which the gun is cut away, again, you can be pretty sure. I mean, after all, how many people are going to take a brand new gun? Look at that. That looks like the slide has never even been racked back. How many people are going to take a brand new gun and cut it away? Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? Highly unlikely. Is your security to the same level when buying this gun as buying the other cutaways I've mentioned? No. Not unless you can document that this is truly a factory cutaway. Very likely, the other ones 100%, this one maybe 90%. But sometimes we have to go with our gut, even when all of the information is not immediately available to us. Thank you once again for having joined us. Hopefully you found this review of factory cutaways useful. Again, I can't emphasize enough, there are no absolutes. But if you find, follow the guidelines that we reviewed, I think you'll be in much better shape. Good collecting, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.